Hi guys. <clears throat> it is a cloudy, hopefully soon to be rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. Reporting from Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of <coughs> Ithaca, New York, where the little dog and I, we are in the middle of moving seven yards of manure, getting the uh, organic garden ready to plant with my red clover uh, to till in next spring. So anyway, I am exhausted, guys. It is now past dark, and I didn't think I would have any energy for a uh, chronicle of the collapse. Oh yes, this is Collapse Chronicles, and I am Sam Mitchell, but I finally getting around to uh, checking out emails and YouTube comments. And I noticed several of you have called my attention to this essay from this website uh, I've read from before called The Medium. The Medium. This is from a fellow I have never heard from, Indy Samarahiva from Colombo, Colombo, Sri Lanka. It's Colombo in Sri Lanka. Anyway, he's a writer from over there. And his essay, uh, which, as I say, several of you have alerted me to this, titled, I Lived Through Collapse. America is already there. Any of us uh, clueless Americans wondering when America is going to collapse? Well, according to this fellow, uh, we've already collapsed. So anyway, one, once again, guys, uh, so I read this, and, and it is a good piece, uh, and, I'm, and I am going to share it uh, because it is part of the debate. Uh, now, this does not mean that I agree with everything. I am not at all sure this man is comparing apples and oranges. There, there's plenty of places here where, where particulars he's not comparing apples and oranges, whether you can call a civil war in Colombo, Sri Lanka, it, it, anyway, but it does, you know, we're, look, we're all trying to figure out what it's going to look like, uh, you know, starting November 4th, when uh, either civil war, martial law, uh, Mad Max or not, you know, we're all trying to figure out what it's going to look like in this country beginning on November 4th. So this is... Uh, Indy says that by and large, just, you know, we don't have to worry. Just don't worry about it. It's, you know, <coughs> it's just another day in the 21st century when martial law or civil war, whatever, uh, you know, just, just calm down. <coughs> and he very well could be right. So anyway, take it away, Indy. <coughs> I lived through the end of a civil war. Do you know what it was like for me? Quite normal. I went to work. I went out. I dated. Huh. He went to work. He went out and dated. This is three things I have not done in the past six months. Anyway, this is what Americans don't understand. They are waiting to get personally punched in the face while ash falls from the sky. That's not how it happens. Well, it's not how it happened to you, brother. Uh, so, assuming that what happened to this guy is what is happening or happened or is going to happen starting November 4th, then fine. Anyway. This is how it happens, precisely what you're feeling now, the numbing litany of bad news, the ever-rising outrages 
people suffering, buying, and protesting all around you while you think about dinner. Dinner? Damn, I hadn't thought about dinner. Oh no, did I remember to take those pork chops out of the freezer? I already forgot to buy my tequila. I have no margarita tonight. Now I think the pork chops, the factory farmed pig pork chops are in the freezer. I've been thinking so much about Civil War and Mad Max and martial law and about, uh, you know, do I, do I bail to Florida and deal with it there? Do I hang out up here? Uh, I have been so busy thinking about the collapse of, uh, the, of America. I, I forgot to take the damn pork chops out of the freezer. <laughs> I forgot to buy my tequila. You know, I need to learn something from this man. He's thinking about dinner during Civil War. Civil War hasn't even happened yet. And I forgot all about my own dinner. I'm gonna have popcorn for dinner tonight. Anyway, if you are trying to carry on while people around you die, your society is not collapsing. It's already fallen down. Uh, while people around me are dying, uh, I'm trying to think of one person around me who has died. Now, I won't get it. Anyway, back to Indy. Uh, okay. <coughs> this is what life was like for this man. <clears throat> I was looking through some old photos for this article and the mix is shocking to me now. Almost offensive. There's a burnt body in front of my office. Then I'm, I'm playing Scrabble with friends. <clears throat> There's bomb smoke rising in front of the mall. Then I'm at a concert. At a concert. Well, Indy, uh, maybe you can have a civil war and still go to concerts. I have. Uh, I was just talking to a friend today. She was uh, like rubbing it in my face how she was at some concert in Austin, Texas, and dancing to a live band. Uh, I have not gone to hear live music one time since I got to New York for the simple reason that live music is banned in the entire state of New York. And as far as I know, Civil War has not even been declared yet, and it's already worse here than it was in the middle of a civil war in Sri Lanka. Even then, they didn't outlaw live music or friends playing Scrabble, probably. Uh, illegal in New York. Anyway, this is, you know, looking back through his photos, there's a long line for gas. Then I am at a nightclub. Well, concert nightclub. I don't need to repeat what I just said. Uh, I do understand that the nightclubs are open again in Florida, which is probably the reason I'm going to, the, the main reason I'm going to be heading to Florida is not so much to avoid Mad Max. It's so I can hear some damn live music. See, Civil War did not stop live music in Colombo, Sri Lanka. This is why I, a, a lot of this article is BS. Uh, anyway, this meaning his photos, and, and I'll put the link on here, and he shows a bunch of these photos. So you can see a lot of photos that he took in this two-week period. This is all within two weeks. Today, I, you know, it would have been nice if he had given the date of this. Now, like most Americans, 
I have no, I was completely unaware, uh, unaware that there was a civil war in Sri Lanka. First I've ever heard of it. So I don't know, is he talking last year? Is he talking 10 years ago? He never gives the date. Old photos. Anyway, today it would be nice if we knew how many years later. I'm like, did we live like this? But we did. I mean, I did. Was I a rich Colombo fuckboy? I have never heard the word F-U-C-K-B-O-I. I guess that's a Sri Lankan word. Was I a rich Colombo fuckboy while poorer people died? Well, yes. I wrote about it, but who cares? The real question is, who are you? I mean, you, reading this, you have the leisure to ponder American collapse like it's even a question. The people really experiencing it already know. <clears throat> so I'm telling you as someone who has been there in similar shoes to yours, this is it. This is collapse. My pork chops are frozen and I have no tequila in the house. This is collapse. America has already collapsed. What you're feeling is exactly how it feels. It's Saturday and you're thinking about food while the world is on fire. This is normal. This is life during collapse. Just read what it says on the tin. Life now with 20% more death. Collapse does not mean that you personally are dying right now. It means y'all are dying right now. I'm glad to see they use the term uh, y'all in, uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, Y'all is the plural. I've never understood why Yankees have such a problem with the word y'all. You all. I, I, it drives me crazy, these Yankees who, who you know, they, they, they try to act Southern when they, and they're looking at me, or maybe they're talking to me and Sancho, looking at me saying y'all. So I guess they're talking, to, you don't say y'all to one person, y'all, you all, a, a, a group, an all-inclusive group of more than one person, y'all, you all. All right, thank you for the uh, grammar lesson. It means y'all are dying right now. Death is sometimes close sometimes far away, but always there, usually for someone else, but someday, randomly, for you. You are going to die someday, Sancho Panza. Get used to it. You're going to die. Someday. I don't want to break this bad news to you, but you are going to die. There'll be no more chippies. No more mousies. No more froggies. Anyway, I used to judge those herds of gazelle when the lion eats just one of them alive and everyone keeps going. But humans are just like that. That's the real meaning of herd immunity. We are fundamentally immune to giving a shit. It honestly becomes mundane for the privileged. <clears throat> as, a Colum as Columbo kids, we used to go out, little dog, I know you're upset about uh, your, your newfound 
awareness of your own death. But anyway, I got to deal with this. And I'm sorry about the pork chops. You're not going to get any pork chops for dinner because dad forgot to take the pork chops out of the damn freezer. You're going to have to eat popcorn for dinner because the world is collapsing. Can you go find a mouse to eat? Can you get a mousey to eat? Is there a mousey for us to eat like that? Anyway, as Colombo kids, we used to go out, worry about money, fall in love. It all went on. We popped the trunk for a bomb check. Turn off our lights for the air raids. I'm not saying that we were untouched. My friend's dad was killed, just gone with a landmine. R.I.P. Uncle Nihal. I know people who were beaten, arrested, went into exile, but that's not what my photo stream looks like. It was mostly food and parties and normal stuff for a dumb 20-something. If you're waiting for a moment when you're like, this is it. I'm telling you, it never comes. And of course, this is obviously, guys, all joking aside, uh, th this is where uh, th th this man and I part company. It will come. It always comes. The moment will come. And uh, in case you've never heard me say this, the moment is going to be for uh, whenever people ask me this question, which isn't very often, but the few times people have asked me the question, okay, Mr. Doomsday, uh, when, you know, when is it, the moment, the event, going to happen? And, and my answer to the question is when the internet goes down. When, uh, when you turn on your computer, go on the internet, and you have no internet, and you determine that it's nothing wrong with your computer or your router or whatever, and you find out that all of your neighbors uh, have no internet, and uh, you try to call the internet company and nobody answers. Uh, when the internet goes down, you have seven, that is the moment, that is the trigger. You have 72 hours to decide where you want to live and more importantly, who you want to live with for the rest of your miserably short, horrible, painful life. That is the moment. So the internet never went down for good in Sri Lanka. And that is one of the critical differences. And, and obviously, we're not going to get it. You know, th this doesn't have anything to do with ecological collapse. Okay, this completely ignoring, a, you know, the bigger wheel. This is the little wheel inside the bigger wheel of environmental and ecological collapse, which this story, this essay, completely ignores. I'm not sure if this man, if it's ever occurred to him. But anyway, uh, I, 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 I'm not completely dissing this guy. I'm just reading this with a, a, an, an ounce of discernment and critical thinking. <clears throat> okay, if you're waiting for a moment where you're like, this is it, I'm telling you, it never comes. Nobody comes on TV and says, things are officially bad. There's no launch party for decay it's just a pile up of outrages and atrocities in between friendships and weddings and perhaps an unusual amount of alcohol. Perhaps you're waiting for some moment when the adrenaline kicks in and you're fighting the virus or fascism all the time 
but it's not like that. Life is not a mo movie, and if it was, you're, you are certainly not the star of the movie. You're just an extra. If something good or bad happens to you, it will be random and no one will care. No one will care if something bad happens to you. If you're unlucky, you're a statistic. If you are lucky, no one notices you at all. Yes. Collapse is just a series of ordinary days in between extraordinary bullshit, most of it happening to someone else. That's all it is. And I thought it ended there, but uh, no, he keeps going with this, so I guess I'll keep going with this. One day I was at work when someone left a bomb at the bag check at No Limit. No Limit, I think, is the name of a store for clueless moron consumers. Never heard. I, I'm assuming what No Limit is, is the, is the single greatest name for a, a store in a shopping mall I have ever heard, unless he's being ironic. And I, but I don't think he is. I think there really is a, a store called No Limit. One day I was at work when someone left a bomb at the bag check at No Limit. It exploded, killing 17 people who were shopping. I experienced this as the phone lines getting clogged for an hour. My wife experienced it as, well, a bomb. It was 500 meters, meaning five blocks from the house. 17 families experienced it at the end, and their grief goes on. As you can see, this is not a uniform experience of chaos. For some people, it destroys their bodies, others their hearts, but for most people, it's just a low-level hum at the back of their minds. What is that buzzing sound you hear now? Today, I assume you went to work. Yes, I did. Uh, Indy, I went to work shoveling, good God, uh, maybe three yards of cow manure. <clears throat> Bad news was everywhere, clogging up your social media, your conversations. Maybe it struck close to you. I'm sorry. Somewhere in your country, a thousand people died. I'm sorry. For each of them, a thousand families are grieving tonight. A thousand more join them every day. The pain doesn't go away. It just becomes a furniture of bones in a thousand, thousand homes. As a nation, you, meaning the U.S., you don't seem to mourn your dead, but their families do, their communities do. Jesus also weeps, but for most people, it's just another day. You've run out of coffee. There's a funny meme. This can't be collapse because nothing's collapsing for me. But that is exactly how collapse feels. This is how I felt. This is how millions of people have felt including many immigrants in your midst. We're trying to tell you as loud as we can. You can get out of it, but you have to understand where you are to even turn around. This, I fear, is one of many things Americans do not understand. You tell yourself American collapse is impossible. I don't know who the hell they, they think uh, is reading this. Uh, I tell myself every morning I wake up 
uh, the first thing uh, is uh, as soon as I wake up each morning, I, I wonder, is this the day the internet is down? I, I am absolutely flabbergasted every single day I wake up in this country and, and, and that the, the social fabric the disintegrating social fabric of the untied states of America it, it is, is holding itself together. It's, uh, I tell myself 500 times a day that American collapse is not only possible, it is inevitable, it is going to get here quicker than we thought, and it's going to look a hell of a lot worse. Meanwhile, Look around. <clears throat> In the last three months, America has lost more people than Sri Lanka lost in 30 years of civil war. This, of course, is, is, is the single biggest in, in, in uh, bullshit. Uh, if I had a bullshit detector button, I would be slamming it. This guy is not comparing apples and oranges. He knows damn well. And we all know what he's talking about. I'm not going to get off on another corona panic uh, rant. Uh, to, to make a statement that ignorant, just it, 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 it completely debases his whole argument to try to compare civil war to the corona panic. <clears throat> if this, you know, meaning the corona panic, is not collapse, then the word has no meaning. I better just move along. You probably still think of Sri Lanka as a shithole. Yes, I, I think of Sri Lanka as a shithole. Uh, I, I think of the United States as a shithole. Anyway, I need to be careful remember what channel I'm on. Though the war ended, okay, over a decade ago, so the war in Sri Lanka ended over a decade ago, and we are relatively fine, then what does that make you? America has fallen. You need to look up at the people you're used to looking down on. We are trying to tell you something. I have lived through collapse, and you are already there. Until you understand this, you only have further to fall. I understand this on a cellular level, and, uh, and I know damn well I have further to fall. I'm, I'm living in a dilapidated little shack uh, in a floodplain by the side of the road uh, that anyone from Colombo, Sri Lanka would have bulldozed three months ago. And, and I understand uh, that I have a damn long way to fall. And now I can't even have a margarita. And you can't have a pork chop. Anyway, I'll put the link on here so you can go look at some photos of what you can expect it to look like around here on November 4th. Uh, get out there and it, 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 enjoy this level of collapse while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, I got on that dog. I'm done.